Rob, we're going to stay there and talk about Caitlin Clark. Big news that she was left off of Team USA. Um, here's what she said about it. Honestly, no disappointment. Like, I think it just gives you something something to work for. Um, you know, that's a dream. You know, hopefully one day I can be there. And uh, I think it's just a little more motivation. You remember that. And, um, you know, hopefully in four years, when four years comes back around, you know, I can be there. Now, she did also, according to her coach, text her coach that they, meaning Team USA, woke up a monster. So, <laughs> She's planning on going on the tear. But, Rob, what, what are your thoughts? Do you think she should have been on the team? No, I, I really don't. I think it's a big to do about nothing. And I don't, I, this, this has never worked this way, Chris, when you talk about the Olympic team. We saw Shaq being left off for Christian Leitner and, and all kinds of, there are a lot of people like who didn't make it to that. Uh, so, this is not isolated to her. I don't believe in this whole thing. I, I got into it with, uh, I remember uh, Ellie De La Cruz came up, Chris, for the Reds. And he was lighting it up his first uh, six weeks, eight weeks in the big league, or whatever it was, right? He was, oh, my right. God, he's a 5-2 player. Oh, my, my, this is what's wrong with baseball because they don't have this guy. He should be at the All-Star game. What are they doing? They're missing the the guy wound up batting two thirty five and having a terrible second half and striking out almost every time up. And right. my point is it has to be earned. That's all. And And – the WNBA, Chris, they're trying to sell tickets and they're trying to – they'll do whatever they need to do in an exhibition or whatever, but these spots are supposed to be coveted. They're supposed to be golden tickets. You're supposed to work hard for a chance to represent your country. This is not about trying to promote the WNBA or promote anybody. Other people have worked their butts off in opportunities – you know, trying to make this team, and I don't have a problem with it. I don't. And, and the Caitlin, hats off to her, Chris. That's a great response. She didn't pout or say, "Oh, you know, what are they doing? Uh, I'm, I'm being disrespected." No, that would have. That would have. You know what I mean, right? right but right, she, she right. just said, I, "This is it's a dream of mine. It's a goal. Maybe four years from now, I can make it." It's a, her response was very, very mature. I loved it because that's the way you look at it. Everybody can't make the team. Would it have been great, Chris, if she was really one of the top 12 or 15 players? I don't know how many they take, 15 or whatever. 12. 12. Look, that's even a smaller number. Right. If she was one of those 12, they would have taken her. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that if she was really at that level and had put in the work and they really believed, there's, no, there's not 12 other women, you know, who should be on this team other than her, she would be on that team. I think I, I think we can't just hand people stuff. I don't think that she got snubbed. I don't think snubbed is the right word because you can just – like she's probably not one of the best 12 American players in the world right now. You can certainly argue that. Now, Diana Taurasi is 41, 42 years old. She's not having a great year. Her numbers are somewhat pretty similar to Caitlin Clark's. Uh, Clark's are probably a little bit better. Um, so, you you know, and but Tarasi is a legend. She's probably not one of the best 12 players either. But she is a legend, so it's fine for her to be on the team. So, I don't think snubbed is the right word. Although, I could argue, Rob, not that she's the best top 12 player, but I do think this bears saying. Kaylee Clark is not having the bad year that some people think she is. All right, she... She's turned the ball over a lot. She's turned the ball over a lot. But, I, I, I mean, I'm not saying turnovers are irrelevant. James Harden turned the ball over a lot. The, the leading... When he retired, Magic and Isaiah, they were like the top two turnover guys in the league history. I mean, it, when you have the ball like that, you're going to make some turnovers. And now, she's got to cut them down. Don't get me wrong. Five and a half is too many. But she's probably, even in her heyday, she's going to probably average three and a half to four turnovers a game. But she's fourth in the league in assists with six and a half. She's averaging 16, almost 17 points a game. And Rob, she, over five rebounds. She is on pace in a rookie year to become only the fifth player in WNBA history to average 15, five, and five in a season. Not the not the fifth rookie, the fifth player. 
And her shooting percentage, we look at it, 37%. And we think it's terrible. Check the check the records. Not, not record books, but check the stats of right. the guards in the WNBA. That's about what they shoot. They A lot of them shoot 37%. I think that's exactly what Tarasi's shooting. You know, so that's not – she's having a better year than a lot of people are giving her credit for. Obviously, her team isn't winning. But – all that said, Rob, where I disagree with you is that even though, yes, you can, the team is fine. I don't know who you're taking off, all that. This was a mistake not to put her on, though. Because they, I do think it was an opportunity to grow women's professional basketball in America. We're going to win the gold. I don't care who the 12th person is. We've won seven straight. We've won 55 straight games, our women. It's not like the men. The women dominate, Rob. They beat Japan by 15 in the gold medal game the last time. We're going to win. We're going to be routing teams. So you could have easily put Caitlin Clark on Rob. And 92, the, the original dream team, now they had to have one college player. They picked Christian Leitner over Shaq. There was no – now, Christian Leitner was a phenomenal college player. He, Chris, he's one of he the was greatest third, all-time college right. players. Right. He, he was a phenomenal college player. But you obviously could argue it should have been Shaq. But I and, – and, and you don't always just pick the sheer 12 best players. You try to build kind of a team. How are people going to fit together? And I just think, Rob – Caitlin Clark is a draw, rightly or wrongly, agree with it or not, she is a draw. And now I think our women are going to run through the competition, win the gold medal, and nobody's going to pay much attention. But if they had had Caitlin Clark on that team, I think people would have been paying a lot more attention. It would have just grown the game that much more and so I just think, Rob, from a PR standpoint, that it was a mistake not to have her on the team. That That's my thought. Yeah, I, I hear you. I, I just I think you should keep it as something special. You should make it so that people have to earn it. And they're, they're you just said it. They're going to win regardless. I got that. So she's not going to change, especially if you put her on a team and then she's not even really playing that much. What would be the purpose of that? Well, there was a report, you know, you Christine know I mean? Brennan, of course, who said who reported that part of the reason that they or she said there was a feeling among the the quote unquote decision makers. That wasn't, I don't think her exact term. That what how would the millions of this was this is direct, millions of fans of Caitlin Clark. How would they react to her not playing? Right. Much? Then, then they'll now, be like, that, she's I don't on the think, team, and then she's not there. Why won't they well, put her in? They would have been routing these teams, so I think she would have got good minutes. You know, she would have probably played a decent amount because I think they'd be blowing these teams out. Um, but I also don't think that should be. I mean, if you're if you're looking at that negative PR, if you will, then look at the positive PR of her being on the team. I do, Rob, I don't doubt that, you know, there have been race and gender and all types of things uh, have been thrown into this mix, this whole Caitlin Clark thing. As you know, people are saying all types of stuff and dividing into camps and stuff. But I, I don't doubt that, like, if she was put on the team, and you make a good point, like, I'm not saying she's, I don't think she's probably at this point one of the 12 best players in the country. You know, I, I I don't think that's the case. But I think had they, there may have been some thinking. I'm not going to say they definitely feel this way. But has she been put on the team, Rob? There already are accusations that she's benefiting from white privilege. People like only like her because she's white and she's getting benefits that, you know, they don't give to the black female players. And we, you and I have talked about, I called out the Chicago Tribune. I thought that editorial they wrote 
where they called uh, Kennedy it, it, Carter's hit. Yeah, it was assault, assault. An assault. That right. was racist, period. The end, as far as I'm concerned. I can't believe that I they think, wrote that. I yeah, really I think Jill Biden inviting Iowa to the White House, even though they lost Which in the never championship, happened. was racist. It rooted in racism, rooted in some, some white uh, privilege and all that. Um, so I think there have been those. Um, but I wonder if the the if they felt well, if we put her on the team, are we all? Is it going to be more accusations of white privilege, of racism, and things like that? And there may have been, so they may have looked at that PR wise, Rob, and said we don't we, we getting enough of that right now. <laughs> we don't want to you know add fuel to the fire. Um, so I I just think though, Rob. I think all of this publicity, all of this talk is good for the league. And I think having her on the team would have been good from a PR standpoint. And she's not playing so horribly. She's not playing horribly at all. She's playing well enough that, yeah, there would be pushback, but you also could be like, hold up. She's about to become one of five players in WNBA history to do this. She's a runaway rookie of the year. It ain't even close. All right, she's averaging 17 and six and a half. Like, you know what I mean? You could put her numbers against up against some of the better players in the league and see that they're not that far behind or or actually close. So um I, I just think it was a missed opportunity, Rob. Yeah, I mean, there'll be people who feel that way. I, I just don't. I think you gotta keep some integrity. You just can't do the popular move, Chris, and put people in just because you think it's gonna be good. I remember when uh I was against uh, Puig, Chris. The same thing. Remember when he came up to, with the Dodgers? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Puig was yep. was the, the new hotness. Yeah. Everybody wanted him in the All Star game. There are people who have played and put in their time, had better numbers, more at bats, Chris. You know what I mean? Who deserved to be on the All Star team before Yasiel Puig, despite the excitement that he had, and and eventually I think he did make it. Uh, but it shouldn't be a gift. Because he's the hot new hotness. That's all I'm saying. Bro, here's a little. I mean, as you know, her TV numbers are huge. Their team is averaging over fifteen thousand fans a game. That's home and road. Home, they're averaging about seventeen thousand. Um, the rest of the NBA, WNBA, is somewhere around seven, eight thousand. Um, this year, Clark and the Fever have already had the most viewed WNBA games ever for ESPN2, ESPN+, Plus, Disney+, Plus, ABC, ESPN, CBS, and NBA TV. People are tuning in. I, I just think they should have tried to capitalize on it. 